Good evening, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. Today we'll be talking about arming yourself and knowing the scriptures to use against Jehovah's Witnesses, which is a cult. And it is our responsibility and duties as Christians, as soldiers, in the kingdom of the Lord to correct them, to rebuke them so that they will not lead others to damnation with their false doctrines. Okay, so I'm going to going to read out what they believe but I'm not going to list their Bible passage because they don't use Bible. They use their magazine, which is Watchtower, which I'm not even going to list what they get from it because that's not God's word. That's not God's word. But I am going to list the counter Bible doctrine that you can counter them with. I'm going to list the scriptures. So have a pen, or you can just copy and paste. Have a pen ready so you can write down this stuff here. What they say about the Trinity, they say there is no Trinity. They say there is no Trinity. What does God say? God says the doctrine of the Trinity is biblically based. Let's see. Let's go to Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let's go to John 14, 26, shall we? John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. <laughs> yeah, hit him with that. Let's go to our next one. John 15, 26. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians 13, 14. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The second epistle is to the Corinthians was written from Philippi, the city of Macedonia, by Titus and Lucas. Let's go to 1 Peter 1, 2, that's next. 1 Peter 1, 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Let's see. Foreknowledge of God the Father Sanctification of the Spirit, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, who is grace. That's three. Okay, I can hear the gavel. The judge has the gavel. I can hear the gavel. I can hear the gavel going down. The judge is bringing the gavel down. Case closed. Okay, so 
We just knocked them out of the race with their belief on the Trinity. We are actually their disbelief of the Trinity. Okay, let's all go over what they believe and what they say about the Holy Spirit. They say the Holy Spirit is God's impersonal active force. Really? God says the Holy Spirit is not impersonal. We can find this in one, two, three, three passages in scripture. The first one being John 14, 26. Let's go there, shall we? John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever have I said unto you. Yeah. I can see the nail and the hammer. The nail is halfway in. It's halfway in. Let's go to the next scripture. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Okay, I got my hammer ready. That nail is about to uh, go all the way in. The nail is supposed to be, I mean, it's going, about to go all the way in. Let's go to the last one, Acts 10, 19. Acts 10, 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. The Spirit Spirit said unto him. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hammer this nail in hard all the way in. There. Sealed and delivered. Okay, let's go over what they believe about Jesus and Michael. We the elect, we know who Michael is. We know who Jesus is. But this is what they say. They say that Jesus was Michael the archangel who became a man. Jehovah's first creation was his only begotten son and was used by Jehovah in creating all other things. First of all, Jesus being Michael the Archangel does not make any sense whatsoever. So you're saying God sent Michael the Archangel to earth to die? And also they say that Jesus was a created being. Now I can prove them wrong and this is something they hate the most. They do not like this scripture. They hate it so much that they changed it. This is what God says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, capital G. They hate it so much that they changed it to, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. You look in their little satanic pamphlets that they hand out. That's what it says. That's what they believe in. But we're about to prove them wrong, ain't we, that boy? We're about to prove them wrong. Let's go to what God says, because we always go by what God says. We go by the book. We go by scriptures. We go by the word. Amen. God says Jesus is the creator, not a created being. 
One, two. We got three scriptures that prove it. Let's go to the first one. John 1, 1 and 3. I mean, John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was not a God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. You want to really get on their bad side? Matter of fact, you, you quote the scripture right here to them. They might just pack up their stuff and leave. Goody, 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 goody. That gives the evangelists a chance to save even more souls because that's all they do is deceive and betray the Lord. They deceive the people and they betray the Lord. Am I right about it? Okay, let's go to our next one. What they say about the resurrection for those of y'all scratching your head the resurrection I like to roll my tongue they say about the resurrection Jesus did not rise from the dead in his physical body oh 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 okay I had to get rid of those fits of anger because this really makes me mad. They say that Jesus did not rise from the dead in his physical body. God says Jesus did rise in the body and we got scriptures to prove it. Let's go to Luke 24, 36. Luke 24, 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Well, 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 what's the next one? First Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. Let's go there, shall we? First Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Notice how it says, one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. It doesn't say anything about created. What is the next one on our list here, dear boy? Colossians 1, 15. Let's go there. Colossians 1, 13 through 15. Who had delivered us, delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Of his dear son, Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Uh oh. That coffin is that coffin is almost being nailed shut. A few more nails and it'll be nailed shut and buried deep into the grave. 
So what is our next one? We just spoke about the resurrection. The cross. This is what they say about the cross. They say Jesus did not die on a cross, but on a stake. They must think that Jesus was a vampire. No, I'm just kidding. God says Jesus was crucified on a cross. And we can prove it. Let's go to John 19, 17, 17 through 19, shall we? This is getting juicy. John 19, 17. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. No, put him on a stake. No, they where they crucified him. No, put him on a stake. No, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. No, the stake. No. And, G and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. No, a stake. No. And put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of, Na of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Oh, I think a couple of more nails and this coffin is going to be shut. You heard? Let's go to the next one. This is what they believe on those who will be saved. They say only their church members will be saved. Only their church members will be saved. So what happened to Isaiah 56, the Jews and the Gentiles? Hmm, they sound like the black Hebrew Israelites. Y'all don't forget, look at my, uh, my video on scriptures to use against them, because that's another court, but be, be careful with them. Try to stay away from them as much as possible. They're a violent organization, a violent court, more or less a gang. And they don't like it when you're right. <laughs> they reject the truth. They reject Jesus. They reject their own salvation. Okay, where was we? Oh, they believe that only their church members will be saved. That's what they say. But let's, let's look at what God says. God says that whoever believes that Jesus is Lord will be saved. I can just go to Romans 10.9. That whoever so believes, that whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ that he rose from the dead shall be saved. They say only their church members will be saved. Let's go to John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his, his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I feel that nail going in that coffin again. It's almost shut. <laughs> you like my sound effects? Hmm. 
Let's go to John 14, 4, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hmm. That doesn't sound like only them will be safe because Jesus said, No man cometh to the Father but by me. He said, Man. He didn't say, No Jehovah's Witnesses comes to the Father except through me. He said, no man cometh to the Father. That could be anybody who has faith in Jesus Christ and believes. Am I right about it? Okay, let's go to Romans 3.23 and then we're going to nail this coffin. We're going to put the nail on this coffin. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the full forbearance of God to declare at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus and the justifier of him no Jehovah's Witnesses no and the justifier of him no Jehovah's Witnesses no and the justifier of him who believeth in Jesus. Where's my hammer? Oh, here it is. We're gonna nail this one down too. There, nail that one down. How many more nails we got? We got about two or three more nails to go. And it's gonna be a done deal. The coffin's gonna be closed and put in the grave. Amen? All right, what's next on our agenda? Oh, here's what they say about hell. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> Pay attention. This is what they say about hell. They say there is no hell or fire where the wicked are punished. They say there is no hell or fire no lake of fire, no Hades, no hell in general, where the wicked are punished. Let's see what God says. Because God is the one who created the lake of fire for Satan and his minions. All who deny Jesus as Lord will one day know firsthand that there is a hell. <sighs> Fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord. All who deny Jesus as Lord will one day know firsthand that there is a hell that's called judgment. And we got one, two, three. We got four scriptures that proves this. Four scriptures. I don't know what Bible they've eaten from, but it must be from the synagogue of Satan. Let's go to Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. Then, he sh then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I got three nails left. Let me pick this one up because we're getting close to putting this one in the coffin too. Okay. 
Then he shall say also unto them on the left hand, on the left hand, because scripture says that the wolves will be on the left, the sheep will be on the right. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay. And this is Jesus talking. So this proves that there is a lake of fire prepared for Satan and his minions. I hope a Jehovah's Witness is watching this video. You can get schooled and you can still be saved. Leave that court. Come out of her, my peoples, saith the Lord. Okay, let's go to the next one. Mark 9, 44. Mark 9, 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Is he talking about earth? Because I've never seen a giant worm on earth. And the fire is not quenched. Oh, the fire is not quenched. Oh, 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 eternal torment. That's the lake of fire. Where the worm diet not. It's the worm diet not. They're going to be eaten alive. And spit it out and eaten alive and spit out. And burning and eternal torment. Ooh, that's some deep stuff right there. Okay, I'm getting this nail ready. Cause we're about to nail it down. Revelations 117, 18. Revelation 118. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Notice here how he said hell and of death because they're both synonymous, synonymous with each other. They're both synonymous with each other, hell and death, because there's only two places that you will go. After death, there's hell and eternal life. But if you die in your sins, hell and death go together because you will have eternal death, eternal torment. Just like, you ever watch a whole movie and you see somebody dying all over and all over and all over again, same thing. Okay, let's go to Revelation, Revelations 2010. Revelation 2010. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. No, purgatory, no, the lake of fire and brimstone. No, he was sleeping. No, he was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Whoa. Let's go to Revelation fourteen fifteen. Revelation fourteen eleven, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Let's look at that. That first sentence. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. The smoke of their torment. They're being tormented and the smoke ascended up. 
into the heavens forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. One more and we're gonna nail this down. We're gonna nail this coffin down. Let's go to Revelations 21. Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone and sulfur, which is the second death. Oh, right it then. Let's nail this down. Done. One more nail left, and then we're going to bury, put the coffin in the grave and bury it, put the dirt over it, and it'll be done. We'll wash our hands of it like Punch's Pilot. <laughs> Let me stop. What they say about those who will enter heaven. They say only 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses go to heaven. Really? Let's see what God says. God says all who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord will enter into heaven. I'm going to take God's word for it. Not some mere human being on the planet who's probably more of a sinner than anybody I know. Let's go to John 14, 1 through, 1 through 5. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me, you Jehovah's Witnesses. No. Believe also in me. You Jehovah's Witnesses. No. Let not your heart be troubled. He's talking to everybody. Am I right about it? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. No, the Jehovah's Witnesses. No, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh to the Father, no, Jehovah's Witnesses, no. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Y'all ready? Okay, let's nail it down. All right. I want you, you, and you to join me. Pick up a shovel. Everybody get a shovel. All right, let's dig. Let's put the grave down. Okay, now let's put the dirt over on the grave. Pat it down real good. You with the treadmill, make it nice and even. There we go. Their beliefs and their doctrine is now dead and buried. We just buried their doctrines because the word of God is the only thing, the only thing standing 
throughout all the ages until infinity. Amen. Because our God is everlasting and his word is truth. Oh, I forgot to mention this last one. Only 144,000 witnesses go to heaven. God says all who believe that Jesus is Lord will enter into heaven. All who believe. You can find that in John 14, 1 through 5. Matthew 16, 19. Okay, so let's talk about what they practice, beliefs that they practice. They believe that blood, transfus blood transfusions are a sin. They also believe that the soul ceases to exist after death. All souls belong to me, saith the Lord. From dust you came, to dust you shall return but your soul goes to the Father. They refuse to vote. They do not salute the flag. They will not sing the Star Spangled Banner. They do not celebrate Christmas or birthdays. Their leadership will not allow them to serve in the armed forces. Those that leave the organization are known as apostates. It's like a game. Blood in, blood out. Jehovah's Witnesses cannot talk to them or even greet them on the street. So that if so that means if you leave their organization or their cult, I'm going to say cult, because they're really not an organization. They're, they're organized. They are organized cult. <laughs> so if you leave their cult, you can't talk to them. That's sort of like the... The, the Illuminati or the Mafia. Ooh, I ain't scared of you. For many years, it was taught that blacks were that color as a result of God's curse on Canaan. Yeah, right. Lying, oh, here's a clincher. Lying is a part of Theocratic war strategy. A Jehovah's Witness can lie to someone if they are not entitled to know the truth. You know what God says about that? A lie is a lie. You tell one lie, you're a liar. A lie is a lie. Even if you tell a little white lie, it's still a lie. It's a little white lie is the same as telling a big lie or somebody who's been lying for years or all their life. You're still a liar. Just like that saying that I used to hear when I was in school, when I was little, liar, liar, pants on fire. Now I know where that came from. <laughs> Peri periodically, periodically, Jehovah's Witnesses' doctrine will change. This is known as new light. Yes, new light. There's only one light, and it's not new. Amen? Witnesses' doctrine will change. God word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes and he never will. God's word never changes and it never will. Are these guidelines that an awesome, gracious, merciful, loving, all-knowing God would give you? No. Jehovah's Witnesses are trained in the art of verbal battle. Do not engage them. Pray first and share the scriptures verse by verse, point by point. Share in stern love and you will disarm them. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. First Peter 3, 
15. Defend your faith with the word. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 Okay, this concludes my tutorial on how to dismantle and disarm any Jehovah's Witness and be concise and if you don't want to engage them, show them the love of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Don't condemn them. For they have they are already condemned. But show them love, you know what I'm saying? Do this in a Christ like manner. Because the, the love of Jesus is the overall victory that you will always have. You will always have the victory with Christ Jesus. Am I right about it? Okay, my peeps. Love you all. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.